but I need to get meeting to order. I uh, welcome the public and thank you for taking the time to attend our meeting this evening. We have a few additions to the agenda. Uh, we have a correction under the um, item B of the consent agenda on the June bills. The correct number is $509,676.10. Under uh, item R, resignations. Uh, we can add Mitchell Angleton, Axel High School Junior Class uh, sponsor. <clears throat> Under contracts, we can add Elena Sutton, Axel Public School Principal. The, the contract, though, is contingent upon Jackson Heights acceptance of her resignation. We can add Sarah Cormier to the Wetmore Attendance Center ISS. On the second page, we'll add item 8A, 
executive session for the discussion of a confidential student issue that is allowed under the coma exception for student confidentiality. Make a motion to uh, accept the agenda as amended. Second. Motion support to accept the agenda as, as amended. Any questions or discussion? Those in favor raise a hand. Those same sign. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, unless there are, are there any items on the consent agenda that anybody feels they want to discuss? Otherwise, we need to have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as amended. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Motion with support to approve the consent agenda as amended. Any questions? Those in favor, raise your hand. Both sign and sign. Motion passes 7 0. This is, uh, I think we've got somebody from the public who wants to uh, address the board this evening. Who do you want me to? Right here. It's right up front. Yeah. Sign, huh? <laughs> you are on YouTube. I am on YouTube, so keep it clean. Okay. Um, my name is Chris Cole. Some of you may know me, some of you may remember me, some of you may not want to know me. That's okay. Um, I don't know, did everybody get my letter that I sent concerning uh, homeschool kids and extracurricular activities? Um, I just want to get the conversation going, for one. Um, why can't they? They pay taxes just like anybody else. Now, I know people are going to say I'm out of district. That's okay. Still pay taxes. You still get federal dollars. Um, yeah, my kid could go to Hiawatha and do it in district. Um, so you may say I'm arguing in front of the wrong board. If I have to, I can get a $400 shack over in the district and send my kid over here. So um, there are ways to work around this. What I'm looking for is your help. And how can we work around this? My understanding is it's up to the school board, whether you guys want to do it or not. Now, I know that's going to lead into, but Keisha. Well, we got to start here, and then we can go to Keisha. Um, that's my understanding. If I'm wrong, feel free to jump in, tell me. I'm new to this. Nobody? Well, well so I, I need a little bit more understanding because I'm not clear exactly what authority we do have or what authority we don't have. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's a good conversation to have. I would like to see kids and whether it's you or whether it's some other kids or, or whatnot, but right. I, I think it's a good idea and concept. The question is what authority do we have and what there's there's consequences for every decision to do or not to do. So what are the we need to make decisions knowing what those consequences are. And so right. I need a little bit more information on that. But okay. generally I think it's a good idea. I don't know if you necessarily have the answers to my questions, but I don't know either. That's, like I said, I'm new to it, it too. And that's, I just wanted to get the conversation going because, um, Jim, I know your daughter is in homeschooling. How many, well, not her, her kids are. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, well, in, how many homeschool kids would you say are in the area that aren't able to take part in a lot of these events and, and bonuses? As far as you, you I be have, talking somewhere probably. We have always envision school one way for eons and decades and it's you know seats and chairs right and last year we were forced to consider so many other things right it's not that true. so this is a, a good time to bring that topic up it's right and that's sort. exactly why i'm here because of the the recent changes in society really Excuse it's me. nothing that is local but go ahead Ed. you say during this part of the board meeting usually we take input from Public wishes to present information to us. It's it's not the point. Okay. So, so you have the information that I sent. If yes. you have, if you need any more, feel free to contact me. I'll dig up whatever I can. Um, I'd just like to see some consideration and thought gone into this as we go into the next school year. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I was spending a lot of time in the same thing. I think Todd will have some things. Okay. Shoot. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to address the board? <coughs> Student council, PTO, site councils, booster clubs, 
Prairie Hills Education Association, USD 103 Foundation. Meeting coming up uh, July 7th. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything new on the legislative update? Nope. Okay. We've got the uh, administrative reports in our packet. Any questions for the principals or any additions by the principals? Um, will that be your last report then, Ms. Tate? Is that correct? Or do you have one more for yourself? I do. So, Unless you want me to write one. No, <laughs> no, I just wanted to. For fun. I just wanted to take a moment and say that um, we'll miss you, and I'm happy for Auburn, but um, you have done an excellent job and you've been an excellent administrator. We are sorry to see you go, but happy for your new adventure. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Gates, do you have a, anything to follow up with us today? Oh, I am. I'm this stand here, I guess. So I can have, I have too many pieces of paper to navigate. Um, one of the things that I would like to share here just at the very beginning that's kind of not what I said I was going to share, but I think it's uh, important. And I just want to thank the board and recognize the board as well that um, Lisa Seward is heading up our uh, middle school steam camp now my phone my, i'm having phone problems um but anyway she is heading up our middle school steam camp and she had reached out to a parent about something today and the parent had sent her this text message and she said um this is from a parent i'm gonna leave the student's name out but she said have a great day we can't thank you all enough for bringing this to sabetha <clears throat> all the kids love it especially this particular student and the mom said, and this student never likes school. <laughs> so I just want to recognize Lisa and our teachers that are here at the middle school and Wetmore Middle School and Axtell to provide the summer STEAM camp. It's uh, through the K-State uh, STEAM program virtually. And we have at Axtell, we have Katie um, Sandman and um, Brianna Uphouse that are partnering, taking half time each. Carrie Strathman is supervising at Wetmore. Teresa Berger and Christine Krebs are sharing a time here at um, Sabetha Middle School. Linda Hopp is doing full-time at Sabetha Middle School. Liz Baditcher is doing full-time at Sabetha Middle School. And then Lisa is um, really spearheaded that for me. And so I just want to thank the board for providing that opportunity. We are meeting as an elementary group. Their summer school doesn't start till July 12th. We're meeting next, uh, the 22nd, I guess that's next week, um, for some training and PD on their summer school. And I think we're just as excited or if not more, about that opportunity, and we're hoping to receive the same kind of positive feedback. So I just wanted to thank the board for allowing that opportunity and sharing that message from a parent. Ms. Gates, I watched the video that was on that link uh -huh. that came from the state. Uh -huh. Any chance of getting some video from our camp to yes. put on the website or something like yes, that? Yes, we might need to. advertise it for next year. We need to do that. That's kind of our, our goal is to provide an opportunity. It's not just about, um, it's not just about, um, remediating, but it's about helping kids re-engage with school and they get excited about learning. And so this kind of thing is what we want to hear from parents is that kids are excited about coming to school and learning. We want that all the time, but more so in the summer when they're, um, when it's kind of a volunteer. So I will work on trying to get some of that um, on Twitter. I know Lisa and on Facebook, Linda Hopp have been sharing some things. One of the things they did at the beginning um, with the music one is they created musical instruments out of junk <laughs> around the middle school that they could find boxes and recycle. And then they, um, it was, it was sounded really engaging. They talked about, they listened to music and talked about what kind of emotions that evokes. And then the kids created music on their iPads using an app, not um, GarageBand, which we've used before, but a different app. I can't think of the name right now. And when I went over to the middle school, they played me and they said, you know, guess, can you guess what emotion that music is making you feel? Um, and then they were going to write a new soundtrack for some popular movies like um, Star Wars. And, you know, cause think about when you, you hear that music, you know what movie that goes with. And so it's been, I think they've had an enjoyable time. Then we have uh, 26 students, I believe, that are participating in the middle school. And we have 110 elementary students that are going to come to Sabeth Elementary for that. So 
That wasn't on my report, Tom, but I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Can you tell us what STEAM, what the acronym is? Um, STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics is STEAM. So you hear a lot of times STEM, which is Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, and they have really kind of the new thing is adding the art part of it in there, which is the STEAM. So, um, yeah. So um, they've really enjoyed that. And, and the one that's going to be at the elementary school, we're going to have um, the um, launching the, the duck chuck, um, trying to think of what they're called, road rally, um, road rally, duck chuck, um, blah, blah, blah. a third one. They all look really engaging, which will be a part of their time, an hour and a half of their time, and then the students will be rotating through. And we have uh, almost 20 staff that are going to help with that um, between ISS staff, paras, and um, teachers. So it's a good job. Yeah. So, and I'm thankful for that, uh, for that group. I have Cindy Wiltz, Megan Becker, and Jennifer Herman that are helping as my teacher leaders for that. So we've met several times, but they're kind of the boots on the ground that are going to lead that program because I can't just. Um, and honestly, I, I've looked at them, I've started analyzing them, but as a BLT or DLT, we have not looked at them extensively yet. Um, we will be doing that some more. If I just kind of start with them, some highlights. Um, on the first page of the report should have been the English language arts, um, I believe. Yep, make sure I'm on the right thing. That is grammar, um, reading, you know, spelling, um, language arts. If you look at that, we are above the state average in all, um, at all grade levels. Um, if you notice there, if I highlight anything, the fourth grade really knocked it out of the park. And if you remember the first year that they take the set at state assessments would be in third grade. Last year, we did not have a state assessment because of COVID. Um, so that was the first grade year. Fourth graders have had that experience with that. And they um, really blew it out of the park. And if I look at the, uh, when you look at the trends, on the, it's on page three of the, if you, if you, if you look front to back, it'd actually be page, what, one, two, three, four, five, or six. The trend data um, page, you can see that, if you keep going one more, I think, Todd, yeah, to this one, you can see that that, oh, no, maybe not, uh, keep going up, sorry. Should go back up. Uh, sorry, back to the top. Todd, you're going the wrong direction. <laughs> My up and your up's different. Uh, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Maybe yours was in a different order than I stapled mine. Um, but if you look at the trend data, you can see the last time that we were at 313 for fourth grade was that first year, the 2015 state assessments. So when I look across the trends of every year, you can see that our, we've been trending down. We've had that discussion before that our median scores have been trending down. It's on the right one. Back to that year. Yeah. Yeah, that is right. Sorry, grade level four. It just says science. Okay. The, I was having trouble with my spreadsheet for the have to have the right title. Sorry. That is grade four. You can see that their median score of 313. Uh, we had a 318 the next year, but that's one of the higher scores. So when I look at that median, those trends, overall they're trending down. You can see the state is trending down, their average is trending down as well. Um, except for that's like a highlight is would be that grade level. Um, would be a highlight of where we're actually back closer to some of those higher scores. Um, but we are above the state average. You can see, like I said on that, you can see across the, the trending data that the um, state has been trending down as well. Um, knowing that some schools um, were able to stay in school like we were last year, and many schools were hybrid or some sort of, um, you know, out of school. Um, you know, I think all that probably had an impact on those scores as well. Yes. Good question. These these tests were given when? I mean, they are given this year. The testing window was pushed back. Generally, the testing window opens right after spring break for us, usually March and yeah. April. This year, because a lot of schools started after Labor Day or later, the testing window was really April in May, all the way till the very end of school. Mm -hmm. Most of our kids took the assessments in April. The reason I ask that is we. It's interesting to me because I thought about this when I was going through. I said, this was testing kids that missed, if you will, kind of two, at least two months of in person. In person from the previous year. So it's kind of a, mm -hmm. a mishmash of both, which. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I was so, so like, 
pleasantly surprised and um, excited about those fourth grade scores because those were kids that even hasn't didn't have exposure to it last year. Yeah. Um, but it'd be interesting. They really, the state says, don't compare across um, because the um, because the way that the scores are reported across aren't really comparable to say, okay, well, eighth grade only scored a 288, but third, fourth grade median was a 313. You're really not supposed to make comparisons like that. You're supposed to stick to grade level to grade level. Um, so that is kind of, um, it's a celebration to say that we're still above the state average and everything, although some of them are getting very close. Yes. You know, toward the end of the first semester, we heard some sort of from teachers, so trying to manage in class, you know, remote learning, fearful of losing students, losing ground. Mm -hmm. Do these scores indicate that you know, maybe we didn't lose as much as? I don't think I don't think we lost as much as what's made out to be in the media and the press, and I think that's because we were able to spend a majority of time in the school buildings. Now I do know it was a struggle and there was a lot of things that weren't were less than ideal, but I don't feel like we have really lost as much ground. But I mean when you look at that when you see they're still trending down, I mean I think you right. can say that post, post some of that may be related to kids being quarantined, um, not having in person school for that end of the, the school year, those kinds of things. I think they have a they can have an impact on that um, as well. Um, when you look at mathematics, um, that was the next one. The same thing, we see that our elementary grades seem to be outperforming our high school middle schools. Um, we are above the state average at every grade level still. Um, third grade, really, um, and fourth grade, and even fifth grade in mathematics are substantially above um, the state average. Um, but really, you know, every grade level really is the middle schools where we see kind of a downward tick in the math. Um, but overall, um, still doing pretty well in that mathematics area. If you... Um, These are all district the, Okay, so when you look at the next uh, page, Claude, this is where, or the, sorry, one more, keep going. This is one more, sorry. <laughs> One more, one more, one more. There we go. This is where we have it broken down into each building. So AES is Axel, SES is the Beth Elementary, WES is what more. If they have 10 or fewer kids, their scores are not um, reported out as a median score. So if you look at third grade, that's why they don't have a score listed there, a bar, because they don't give you um, that data because they have too few of kids. So on this page is where I broke it down by building just for this year. I have these charts for every year <laughs> as well. If you want those, I can send them. I mean, when I say every year, since since I've been in this position in 2013. So that, this is the chart where you can see, and then this district average is down there in the purple, the 308, and the state average is the, I'm gonna call it orange, I think it's orange, the bottom one is the, the state average. And if I had anything to report that isn't as positive, it would be in the area of science. Um, although we still have some bright spots in science. Um, at the fifth grade level, the district and the state were at the same um, score, which is interesting if I remember correctly, if I look at my chart, I believe it's the same one that we had two years ago. It was a 299 in fifth grade, and that's what the state was to, in 2019, and that's what our district was in 2019. That's what our district and our state is this year is at a 299, so fifth grade is right at that state average. Um, but you can see eighth grade is again has a is, is quite a bit above the state um, average, and then eleventh grade as well. Um, and science is the one that we've taken the least number of times, and I would say um, uh, still maybe trying to figure out assessing with sciences. Um, you know, how do you do a multiple choice test that isn't just about uh, memorizing facts, <laughs> but about applying scientific concepts is a little bit harder. And so I think that's um, that's something that we're still working on. But I think you also see that in our ACT scores and some of our other scores as well. Probably more kids, did, but don't you think maybe science was one of them that for the remote learning or 
that probably got pushed aside just maybe a little bit. Well, it did for sure because we in the um, you know in the spring when we were doing our remote learning, you know we were just doing really math and reading um, more so than science, social right. studies, right. and that kind of thing. So for sure, I would say that. And you know the social studies is even tested. Social studies has a new assessment. <laughs> Thank you for it might not be good. <laughs> it is going to be good. Um, the new assessment for social studies next year will be given to fourth, eighth, and eleventh. And um, it is an in-class, classroom-based assessment. And so it will be, um, it's graded on a rubric, and we will design those assessments. Teachers will, it'll be like a project that they will be doing in the classroom, but it's not something the state gives you this project you have to do. And as a district, we will be meeting and coming up with kind of our concepts and, um, and kind of how that'll work. We've had a little bit of training this spring with that. Um, we had Greenbush do a training on inquiry-based learning. But it's really like, can a student, can they make a claim, support their complaint, claim, provide evidence? Um, and then we use the rubric, we will grade it in-house and then report it. So it does sound more classroom teacher friendly and more user friendly, but maybe not as um, standardized. So when we're reporting scores to the state, it's going to, I think it's so going to be So are you able to choose your own materials on that? We can. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Read the People material over there that have a lot of that type of thing in it. I could show you what's that if you're interested. <laughs> I mean, it's a good program, and they do they do have a lot of good inquiry based yeah um, readings and assessments. I think so. I, I think you're right. I'm I'm not sure if um, I mean, it's still all in that cupboard over there in my whole room. And we looked at I we did look at I mean and we've looked at that. So I'll remind and when we got, get started looking at that, I'll remind them of that again as a good resource for that eleventh grade. I'd appreciate oh, that. Sure. No, that's all. Um, when, when you have the high score and the lowest score, is that highest score in the state, or is that just a perfect score? Explain. Oh, you mean on those graphs? Yeah. The 400? The 320, 300, 380. Oh. Can you explain that a little bit? You know, I'm going to have to look it up, Jim, and I'll have to get back to you exactly the like the range of which of the range of what up they go up to on my graph where it goes to 400 that's just the way i created it in my spreadsheet but i'll get you like the range i can get you some more information about that the range and that kind of thing so honestly i did not look all that up and i can't remember all of that and, today and uh, or when it is talking on the state is that a median score that's the median yes sorry that is the median score average not, yep. not necessarily average it is a median that is what yes the median is what i understand okay uh-huh that is the median if you look at the uh if you go up to the state report todd the first page of the graph it has the standard error measurement there at the bottom of that um and the highest score i guess it does show you is the 380 is the highest score sorry um 380 is the highest score in the state is is the highest score that you could get if you had the perfect okay. yep that doesn't mean somebody got it. That doesn't mean anybody got it. Okay. That just means that's what it is. And if you look at the, um, so 380 is the highest score, sorry. Um, but that doesn't mean anybody achieved that. That's right. just what the yeah, that's just what the highest would be. Um, Does it, do they ever give you a range of what the different schools are? Um, you can do some comparison. Is that what you mean? Like what? Yeah. What different schools around the state are is that what you're saying you can do some of that in the data central um you can say okay i want schools about my size or schools in my area and you can make and you okay. can pull that up you can manipulate your own that. Criteria. uh huh yeah and if you look at the other one that i didn't uh, the other one that i really didn't talk about of this of the data that's printed out there todd if you go to the next yeah stop right there so if you look at this particular um graph it talks about the percentages of students that score in each category the level one two three and four and there's a range a category range for each grade level that's determined um, and then that shows you okay so in in our district 26 percent of our students scored at a level one um, and third grade 31 percent scored at a level two level three 25 percent and then the level four is 18 percent and if you know the with the star recognition that the state is trying to get schools to achieve, they it, it's very unrealistic. Nobody has a the top star, the gold star for the state assessment scores, but it's 75% of your kids in level three or four. 
So to give you, but no, there isn't at least last year. Well, well, it would have been from the previous year's assessment scores. There wasn't anybody in the state that had 75% of their kids in the top two categories. But that is what, in order to get that gold star, that's what the bar set at. It's a pretty high bar. Yeah. We had 69 in level three and four yeah. in, in the uh, grade three. Yeah. And then at the high school level, the scores have been, um, the score range have been um, associated with predicted ACT scores. And so you can see um, in the parent reporting, I would have to go back and read it because I can't remember off the top of my head, but it does give you a, a prediction of if a student scores this, they're predicted to score this range on the ACT assessment because um, the state is trying to make that correlation between this assessment and that assessment. Any other questions? All right, thank Maybe you. Is, this would have been a, a question for uh, Lisa, but your robots, have you figured out what to do with them oh. yet? <laughs> You've got a good question, Jim. But one of the things that um, I, well, the reason I know I noticed them back, back here, here. When we were in the, the <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Lisa has come up with some. We did a training with teachers, and we helped we showed them and kind of got them trained so they kind of see. Lisa did do a really cool thing for the um, for the uh, art show at the middle school. She put it out on social media that if there was any relatives or parents or whatever that wanted to see the display of the artwork in the middle school. At the, I call it the art fair, but I don't know if it has a better art show. Art show sorry, the art show. Um, they could let her know and they could um, control the robot and go around and look at the items. Lisa had them over there. So that was kind of a, um, what I want to say. Um, I mean, it was, it was interesting because if you had a family member or parent from a ways to watch, but we didn't have very many takers on that. Um, but sure. we're still looking for. We're still looking for ways. So, Jim, if you can help me with that, yeah. that'd be great. We also used a, like a student that was um, remote learning. I think it was like, it, to me, it's kind of one of those dollar, uh, a dollar late, a, a dollar, what is it? Short, day late, a, a day dollar late, a dollar short. short. I'm like, what is that saying? A day late, a dollar short. Because when, when they applied for the grant, I think they were thinking there would be more remote learning. But Lisa did help with a fourth grader at Scott Elementary School. Um, and they did use it for connections for the remote learning there. Um, they had the student, <coughs> the student that was at home controlled the robot so that she could have some socialization with the students that were in the classroom okay. and move around in the classroom. And I think that's what they were purchased for with that thinking. But then we've moved, you know, COVID, by the time you get them in, you get people trained, you're ready to use them. Well, hopefully we're beyond that and we don't have to. But if we had a kid that had a broken leg or something <coughs> was homebound, it could be used, and I know Lisa spent time helping the mm -hmm. teachers there at Scott Elementary learning how to use that. That's just one instance where we have used them, but we're still looking for other ways. Um, I <coughs> and they did they use it for recess for some of that socialization because when you think about that, um, you know that maybe that particular student had some an area that they really needed um, was that socialization um, from being at home, and so it worked pretty well for that. I wish that K-State would have done a little bit better job of providing some, the, you know, that wrote the grant, the um, rural schools, some ideas on professional development. And Lisa had recommended to them that maybe we get a users group set up so that we could communicate with other buildings and teachers that have that grant to, um, to have some com conversations about that. I do know, though, something else that it's kind of one of those things, once you get in, and you make that connection, then they allow, they have other opportunities for us. And one of the opportunities they shared just last week was um, with KUK State are partnering to teach, to have a, um, a professional development for two, they're invited two students and two uh, teachers um, in our district to participate in a learning about drones and um, like the scientific uses for drone technology. And so um, it's in July. I sent it out to the science teachers to see if they would have any students that would be interested and any of our teachers are interested. And Lisa said she would help facilitate. She thought she might have some students that she could reach out to. And so they do some video training and professional development in July. 
And then I think it's like the 26th or 27th of July, they go to um, Lawrence to KU on campus and then they get some experience flying the drones and, and using that technology. And I know with farming and a lot of the, you know, a lot of, I'm not an expert by any means, but a lot of that drone technology is something that's becoming more prevalent. We um, want to talk to the, the guys at, at Parkers. At Parkers. Yeah. Uh, oh, so have, the high school student is working for them doing the drone technology. They, they have yes. the ceramics, uh, which uh, uh, does stand counts. It spots insects, um, numbers. Also, they have the technology now to uh, apply chemical with a swarm of drones. Mm -hmm. And so they, so when the gentleman from K-State reached out to us, he said, I'm reaching out to the schools that have participated in our grant with the robots first. And so I feel like even if we, I mean, we're trying to find ways to use them, but even if we don't use them as effectively as we should, if it opens more opportunities and more doors for our students, then it's worth it. When I replied back to him, he said, if we don't have other people that are interested, we might be able to give you more than. This is a very confusing topic. Everything in education is never, it's never as easy as you think it ought to be. So. Thinking about they have had the low learners um, through correspondence more than technology uh, in the past because of illnesses or different things, but uh, remote learning was, was a very rare situation, I would say, but um, I don't want to confuse remote learners with some of the other things that we're going to talk about. Um, there are virtual students that are accredited virtual students. And I'm, the language I'm using is from KSDE and Keisha. Um, so an accredited virtual student is a student who's enrolled in an accredited program. Um, there's a number of them in the state. Uh, usually in August, there's a whole bunch of commercials on TV for Kansas K-12 and some other programs that are trying to generate kids to, to enroll in those courses because that's how they make their money is through full-time equivalency of students. So that's a, a different kind of, go ahead, Leslie. Because if we have a K-12 student enrolled, do we get federal? We, well, we don't. Um, we just started this year uh, a virtual program, though, okay. to try to meet the needs of some students. And uh, maybe we can be more creative with that. Uh, but not K-12. Not the K-12 program. It's not the K-12 yeah. program. It's through Greenbush. Uh, it uses... Edgenuity, which we currently use for uh, credit recovery and, and some to challenge students at, for curriculum that we don't offer uh, in different situations. Uh, but Greenbush provides the, the service that it takes to consider those an actual virtual student. There's a lot of legwork that goes into that. And so uh, Greenbush would provide that for us. But So that's a different kind of a, a student that's not in school. Um, and then Another example, and I'm probably missing one or two variations here, but another example is non-accredited homeschool student. And so, um, so that would be through either through a program that is not considered by the State Department of educating their child, getting the resources and pulling it together uh, for their child, but it, it would be non-accredited. Um, and I, I shouldn't even say this, but I'm trying to think. Um, Prairie Meadows, I believe, is a non-accredited school. Um, it, it's a school that they bring everybody into at times, um, but, but it's not accredited uh, by the state of Kansas, so it's considered a home school, even though there's a facility that the kids come into. Um, is there a different accrediting entity for um, private schools, such as, I know, in, in some of your... Um, I guess there's there's a, a Catholic school, I think, in Seneca and in Topeka, Wichita, mm -hmm. different places like that have several different that, and I don't think they're accredited by the state, but I think there is think some are. other yeah. accredited. They are accredited. They are accredited by, they are the, accredited by the state. state. There is another accrediting institution, NCA, CASI, it's what I think it is. Um, and that's in the, that's a, a dip, more difficult accreditation level. So if you qualify for that, the state automatically qualifies you. Okay. So the KISA process that we talk about, the um, Kansas Educational Systems Accreditation is a process we go through for accreditation, and, and that's what the state of Kansas uses. 
So um, anyway, uh, Jim, this would be a good place. I know you had some comments you wanted to make, and I know you've got some experience. We, we do. We did homeschool our three youngest ones. Um, and most of my growing kids are being um, uh, educated at home. Uh, we, at that, when we were doing it, we were part of the Cornerstone group down in uh, Topeka. Uh, they provide, and to do that, we had to agree to do testing every year. Um, I'm not, I forget where it was, but it was it was national scores, and uh, just to make sure that everybody was progressing just along just fine. Um, I'm doing a little bit of, of, of looking around. Uh, there's 20 states that do allow homeschool students access to inter interscholastic activities. And there's five more that um, see, allow, let's see, I'm reading off the, the website here. Uh, states allow homeschool students to participate in interscholastic activities with the approval of local school districts, which would be us if, uh, if we would um, vote to allow that. However, Kansas is not, is one of 20 states that bars homeschool students from participating in interscholastic activities. Jim, is that because of the state law or what? what is either allowing or prohibiting um, homeschoolers from participating? Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I'm not, um, that well versed in legal jargon. Kansas State High School Activity Association. I think that's oh, it is Kesha. Kesha is what is they may the be. not the state school board. Correct. I spent quite a bit of time going through the Kesha rule book in the last after this came up, and they definitely have very specific language. And even Chris, to you, I think. If Keisha would make changes, I, personally, I think it would be okay. Right now, we we aren't preventing really anybody other than they got to attend school. Basically, that's what right now the Keisha rules require in our case. Or you leave Keisha, and I don't think anybody now, wants to do that. Now, with with that, Keisha said you had to attend the part of an accredited curriculum and they control who and right. what is what they school, but does not have a, a either facility or how do they put that a program that you can well like we did with Whitmore a number of years ago we co-opt with them uh, then that would be allowed then that student would be allowed to participate with the, the terms they use are schools, not individuals at this time. Well, it's could, I address, could I address that, Jim? Yeah, um, you know, one of the things, speaking most most importantly to Noah and being a junior, uh, upcoming junior, he's going to be attending a state accredited school in high. And so that that really should fit the narrative for that, Keisha. That's what I'm saying. This thing, there's definitions in there, and right now, Keisha has their definitions. And I, so th I, uh, this would, may be an issue of really approach because I look at it in Canada. One thing is like homeschooling; they pretty much, if you don't have some attachment to, uh, you're like you're accredited school that we have at USD 113. It, it's really tough. I mean it's interesting. You got you gotta do something to be kids attending somewhat at times in there. If there you is, really need to read you, read this the rules and I've gone I have, to four, four I have, times and, and, and they're it, very uh, nebulous uh, how's that for term? But as far as as 
the education behind it, there is there, there's any number of ex excellent ac ac combinations out there. You can either do it online. There's uh, curriculum that you get at home. It there, there's any number of things, and it's not that the kids. We as a district want the best for kids. Period. I don't think we care where they. They go to school. Except you've got somebody that sets certain rules, and I'm not sure they're quite as flexible. I understand what you're saying. I even said I don't have a problem. I'm just saying right now, I think this is going to have to go. Vacation said, you know, you really don't recognize homeschooling. They, they, they really, they really it's don't. Been a now. number of years since anybody has brought this up to Cation. This, and I think we need to. Be, I, I think we need to put a bug in their bonnet. And whether, I, unfortunately for you, Noah, I'm afraid this ain't going to make a whole lot of difference for you this year. I'm, I'm hopeful um, the next, if we as a district would uh, ask Keisha to put it on their agenda, I think the next meeting of them is in October. Is that correct, Todd? I don't know. When I think it's September. Or maybe Matt, 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 Matt September. Yeah. So I, mean, I don't want to I don't want to jump in and be part of the board meeting, but I would we were kind of addressing it. Um, being a homeschool student, he, he would call this next school year under both categories, both a homeschool student and attending an accredited school. The Highland? Being the Highland program. The, are those for college credits? Yes. And that would probably fall under the dual enroll um, thing in that, unfortunately, Kansas <clears throat> doesn't recognize. So, yeah, we do yeah. have students who attend Highland. Right. Uh, right. They part time at the high school, part time in Highland. They're eligible for activities. And, and then they're eligible because they also attend some things here. That is where Keisha really locks it down right now. And I said, man, this is, I didn't realize until I got into this. And I said, homeschooling, they're, they're really, if you don't attend some kind of class here, and then the second one, Chris, that's even tougher is, uh, I know Noah, if he comes to school here, there's no problem. But if he doesn't even live in his home district, they have some rules, and they consider your home district to be hot water. Correct. So they really nail this thing down, and you're kind of going like, you know, I'm not sure you're quite in the real world anymore. You're not quite recognizing this whole thing. I know from one side, there's another side to say, yeah, but we want to make sure, and obviously some states say we think we can manage it. The kids are getting good education, whether it's through Highland or homeschool or whatever. So I, th I think we've got to figure out how to say here's our circumstances. Why can't Tisha come up with a way to recognize that circumstance? Because right now, I was reading, we got one letter from somebody here in the you know in the district going to prairie meadows and like to participate and i said you know they could maybe sign up for the virtual school through greenbush take four classes there and attend one class a day and let's say they want to be in music come in be part of the band go home finish up go to prairie whatever they would qualify but it always talks about at least attending one hour. The and, thing and, about and, Keisha, they, they, for them, it might be interscholastic activities. Would, However, why couldn't we allow, I mean, for band, and I do realize that there are, the band does do, Contests some sometimes, which would exclude the the student from participating in, in state-sponsored activities, or 
play or vocal? Why couldn't we? We have had students do band. Um, yeah. They couldn't compete in the state large group right. uh, festival, which is kind of the culmination of the year. Uh, so they weren't able to compete in that. But we have had students take band. Okay. So it depends on what they uh, I want to do. I, I think, think there are just... ways we can, uh, we can <clears throat> let students have, participate in, in certain quote unquote extracurricular activities, but then just not, they just not be eligible at this time to go on to state sponsored activities. So, vacation activities. Right. So, but football could be a good example. You might say, I want to play with the team. But as soon as we go into any kind of sub state play, you, you know, can't play in a regular season. Can't play at all. Regular, yeah. so, but that's what I'm saying. So, uh, that's Probably how complicated the rules are. <laughs> but I know. And, and here's, here's and then, why I came tonight to start this conversation. One, I think it needs to be had. And for two, this is my first hurdle in a long race. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I need to get past you guys, for lack of a better way of saying it, and get your approval, get you on board before I can even think about going to but, but like Matt said, September. So September. you might have to be before they would even leave and even start their process. And I, I have no clue. And, and that, that again would be my next hurdle. Yeah. Yeah. What all would we have to do, Matt, yeah. to present to try to get Keisha to consider this? review? Yeah, there's a in time that uh, a local district or a school, a member school like a high school, uh, either AD or principal, they can make a request to their league, put an item on um, on the board of directors agenda, which would be next next fall. Um, I could go through different groups as well. I could go through the Kansas Activities Directors, uh, Athletic Directors. It can come from a lot of different avenues. But from a specific school, a, a superintendent could request an item be placed on the agenda. Okay. I have a couple comments. Um, so, I'm a, Chris, you, I know your kids. My grandkids play with them. So I'm going to go at it a different way. Point. Because I was a teacher here, I serve on the school board because I believe we have a very good school district, and that's part of my job and our job is to make sure that our school district is one that we are proud of. We want to keep it that way, and I I want to work hard to have that happen. I also though want to be a school where we're getting kids to come. I mean, there's a reason that there's, at Casey's, you don't just buy gas. They have a convenience store because they offer more than just gas. I want to offer more, even, and my kids are all in sports, and I couldn't be happier with that. But we know of students, you know of students, um, who played, well, we had a student um, come to school from Prairie Meadows because he wanted to play football. And I know him, I talked to him just several times this summer. He absolutely loved coming to our school. And so I guess I want, I want the athletics and the, all the other things that go with um, and education to be the attraction that gets kids here. I have kids in California that just barely just get back to school. And my little grandson, William, he went to school for recess. I mean, he's a smart kid, but what do fifth, fifth grade boys go to school for? <laughs> it's a lot of times for all the fun they had at recess. And so, you know, it just is that way. My kids were that way. And so, you know, part of our job is to make sure that we keep our teachers excellent and we offer a, an environment that is inviting and is um, a quality education. I don't want a whole bunch of kids leaving our district to be homeschooled and then to come back just to play sports or join the band or forensics because those kids we need here. With, we um, need your kids in our school. Less in, in to look at that on the flip side, wouldn't that if that did happen, wouldn't that show you that maybe your educational product needed improvement if kids were leaving to go to homeschool and just come back for 
that carrot yes. known as the extracurricular. I'm sure it probably. I, I mean, would. that may be real. I, I'm not saying the education. I don't think sufficient. that would happen. I, if I, if I felt that would happen, I, I feel like we'd all have to figure it out. I, I think it would have give us the opportunity to show the opposite of what you were just Absolutely. having on face. Yeah. Open up the school a little mm -hmm. bit and young people. Uh, coming in and, and getting involved with some of the programs with yes, the fine, the fine coaches and teachers that we have out there. What an amazing experience yeah. that is. And that just might open their eyes to say, hey, I want to go inside. I want to see yep. more. Yeah. So there's two sides right. to that point. I agree with that. But I do want to make sure that we're all realizing that what we are here for is to make sure our teachers are excellent and our principals are excellent and our programs are excellent because we want kids in our school, not just on the football team. <laughs> you know, that's what we want. Um, you have to remember, too, that Keisha represents every state and every school in the state. And changing it for our school district is also going to change it for every school district. And there will be a lot of school districts opposed to that. Sure. But I think if you don't start, things do change. And uh, that's why. Uh, you know, we may have to have the rule makers. I mean, you read this stuff. You have to know something about legislative issues a lot. And uh, it's always interesting. But I do think it's really worth saying hmm, some things have changed. I know one thing, I'm sure, Keisha and Matt, you could probably tell us <clears throat> your experience. Is they don't like kids skipping around because of, well, I want to be on that football team this year, you know, and those kind of things like happens in Topeka. They were jumping all over the place. You know. I know that when that became a first request, that was a big deal uh, because area schools, nobody did that. Nobody allowed kids that weren't a full-time student in your building to come take classes. And I know we researched it, um, evaluated it, and, and we kind of came to the conclusion, oh, why not? Yeah, you know, I don't know that it's hurting anything. Would I prefer they come full time? Yeah, they're great kids. You know, <laughs> sure. I would. But so that so we ended up allowing that. Yeah. What we did was we did have <coughs> something of a precedent, and this is what we're still doing to this day um, with the special student policy with students. So uh, a student who has attained the age of sixteen years. Now, don't tell the kids that because <laughs> usually seniors are the only ones that apply, but they're eligible if they're 16 under this. They can become a special student if granted the authority. They have to wait until they've been in school for a while. Um, and then that special student means that they can only take some classes. They don't have to be that full-time student. Uh, under that guideline, then, um, the, they, they have to make sure their credits are accumulating towards their diploma. And then it says they, the student shall participate in no student activities and will receive no student privileges. Now, this is more restrictive than what Keisha requires because Keisha says you got to be enrolled in five. So we could have a part time student. Um, so at the high school is an example. They, they're, they take five classes, they would still be eligible under Keisha. We've applied this rule though. Uh, consistently, and we have said they're not eligible if they're not full time. So, I thought there was some ability for them to be less than full time and participate in other activities. Not, not that I'm aware of. Is it under our school? And that can't include Highland classes. It no, it does. Three three does. About that it does. Two. Oh, it does. It does. Yes, it does. kids that are they, and it, it, and it includes like a work. Program with yes, the, the, student, the yeah. student can take um, uh, internship two periods of, of the day that they go spend with an employer, and um, they can do that as part of a program. So, would it violate Keisha rules to modify this so that the special students could participate in activities? As long as we're not going less than five. Yeah, yeah, get, so, get to five somewhere. That's their. So, that's, so that's, that's what we're currently doing. And I mean, we can bring this back if you want to visit about mm -hmm. it more. Um, but, and, and I know, and Chris said that I'd say this, but Keisha drives this. I mean, we follow Keisha's rules for eligibility, 
Um, you know, I hate to think if we if we had a situation with uh, one of the girls on the Sedetha High School volleyball team this year that was determined to be ineligible later on or was a something that, that would not be a good situation. So, um, but Kathy Baird, I think even that's going into the virtual school too. Somebody says, you know, I'd rather do more where we can use our virtual school program. That will qual that could qualify. Even Casey talks about that. So we've got all these dynamics going on that I think let's see if we can uh, come up with you know with the real world we're, we're probably but, but it easier to but in case you look at the options on, and yeah. uh, find a way to gain participation under the current uh, you know dynamics if you will rather than yeah. think we're going to change patient well we can up to a point but then the people are still going to have to meet that five i like it so that five that five class right yeah that that's the key maybe for our situation we maybe <clears throat> go back and modify our policy there so that we're not more restrictive necessarily than education. But I would also like to see this brought before Acacia because it hasn't been talked about for a number of years. And it well and the the events of the last 18 months yeah. have created a a new and different environment. My, more guess, that discussion. my guess is yeah. that probably they're still going to want some control because you, you never see government to give up control. I did rarely. But again, let's give it a let's give it a go. What's it going to hurt us? What's it going to hurt to bring it before Keisha? Let's let's get that. But then the, the, our policy here, I, I would really like to see that maybe not more restrictive. It's not going to. You're probably not going to change a whole lot as far as the number of students that would participate if. Speaking from a my perspective on it, as a homeschool parent, um, you're, if we wanted to be in in the, the public school, we would be in the public school. Is number two up there for a good reason? Because I mean. I'm sure Noah's a good athlete, but I mean, does that is that on there because it could keep us keep the school from going out of district and getting kids to play on their football team? I, I assume so. <laughs> yes, that's what that's, it wouldn't be unheard of for maybe somebody in real estate to find us a place for them <laughs> yeah. to live for yeah. a few months out of the year. I have an empty head See, <laughs> they even get into work. Parents are okay with that too. They they really. It, it, also, it's quite a deal. Ken, would you agree? And really, to any of you, there's there's probably a way around this. We just haven't found it yet. And that and that's well, the, and that's the, what I Chris, wanted to bring easy, up tonight. The easiest immediately would be to say, I'm going to go then. Yeah, I'm just saying that. About some other things. That that's the rule right now. That you know, I'm I'm just throwing out the idea of saying, hey, then the. That problem goes away. I don't, I'm not saying there are other Great issues. Time. Maybe we could give uh, Todd and Matt a chance to digest the discussion yeah, and see what. Yeah. I can yeah. bring the special student the proposal with, if I understand you correctly, regarding special student right. guidelines, and which would apply then to part time students. Yeah. Thank you, Bert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item, change meeting dates. I just wanted to throw this out there so that you're thinking about it. Um, it's a little bit better this month because our board meeting date happens on the 14th. Um, but most of the time, 
we have a really hard time at the very beginning of the month because that's when payroll hits. Uh, that's when also we have to have bills paid and ready to go for the board meeting. And so uh, we've talked a little bit in this office about the possibility of moving our board meetings to the third Monday of the month. And uh, so just give that some thought process and let me know if there's a, a definite conflict for you. Send me an email. And it's been a while since I've looked at it, but isn't there a statute that the, mm -hmm. the school board meeting shall be on the second I, Monday of the month? I so don't know. The first. I don't know. Um, it, it did used to be the first Monday, didn't it? Like Dennis Stones was a principal and he always met the first Monday of the month. Mm -hmm. So, or superintendent, I mean, the superintendent. There's, we may I can find out. Yeah, just, just, just check into that so, because I have some foggy memory um, in talking to. Uh, folks down at the Capitol, they're on school boards across the state. Okay. It, it well. seems like the, the school board meetings are pretty regularly the, the second sure. Monday of the month, and the, there is a reason for that. Um, but right now, it's it's not coming to mind. Okay. But I bet. Okay. Good. You, okay. you can't okay. wait that long after payroll and bills are paid for board approval. We are waiting three weeks after all that's done for board okay. approval. Um, so, Deb, anything, any thoughts well, there? Well, one of the issues is we can't get everything paid by board meeting time, so we have to have a second one anyway. Every month? Every month? Pretty much every month. Bills don't come in until the 10th, and then you have yeah. to process them all. Right. I mean, but between the, the first and the 10th. But they can't get paid the, the next? Well, then they're past due, so you can't find it. Are they a 15 or a 30 day? Um, 30, but if they are dated the first yeah. and we get them around the fifth, between the fifth and the 10th, yeah. yeah. then they have to be paid by the end of the month or the first of the next month. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, think about that a little bit. Um, I did want to share um, we, we are always thinking about our one to one devices. Uh, in our district, we are in year two uh, with iPads. The last cycle, we got four years out of our iPads. Um, when we go on into year three, I think it's time to start thinking about what we're going to be doing. Um, we do have a problem in our district, and that is that we are more than a one-to-one -one device district. And uh, that means the kids have a device, but then we also have labs in places. And I'm telling you, we don't have the resources to support all of that. So that is a challenge. Um, in our labs right now, um, we, have, we have pieced them together with, with machines that have been given to us over the years that we've been able to, to get. And so our labs are not in good shape right now. So anyway, that's, that's a bit of a part of, that's a part of the problem. Um, so we're going to get, try to get some information and I'll be coming back to you uh, with some information about a process and, uh, and getting your input on that. So. The only comment I'll make is, are most of the labs in the high school, in the middle school and high school? Middle school, high school, we do have one lab in, in elementary. Um, there's Wetmore and Axel lab, okay. have labs yeah. too. The reason uh, for that is that that may put a wider demarcation of which devices you use at one age. And mm -hmm. The other one, you would say, we don't need labs anymore because you've got a bigger yeah. laptop. Our labs are used much more at the high school level, probably the middle school level, than the elementary. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just so. Okay. Uh, I did want to mention that a part of ESSER 3 is that we have to have a return to school plan. Um, I wasn't planning on having anything, but we have to have a return to school plan. It has to be posted on our website. Uh, and so we will that, be that working be on easy to do. Just say, so we, we did that. Yeah. We're open. It should what? be relatively <laughs> <laughs> easy to do. I do. I think that um, in, in considering how we play the game, uh, there's there we have to get input from the community on our on S or three on how we're using our funds. And so you're going to put some of those things in the plan that you have to do anyway. And so that's kind of what what I'm thinking about that. Um, Budgeting, uh, this year, uh, budgeting is going to be a new experience because we have to deal with revenue neutral law. Um, and I don't know if you've heard much about that or not. Um, it, it impacts our timeline for the budget. Uh, it impacts a number of different things. If we have, um, if there's- Is that on the new valuation that came out today? 
Uh, I just got it today okay. for every county except Brown County. Okay. I got it from there. So um, I'm still waiting on it. And surprisingly, with valuations, Marshall County's went down. Um, everybody else saw a pretty significant increase from what it looks like. So in other, in other words, <clears throat> I wonder about that, where they say, well, but the state requires 20 mills. I, I thought they aren't, they aren't sharing in it, so to make the, the revenue, whatever that number right. is, you're going to take it off of your LOB. Or <laughs> yeah, the LOB was supposed to be, you know, give the local district more flexibility in what yeah. they wanted to do. But I mean, LOB, <clears throat> or, uh, uh, or, or it's also known as supplemental income, uh, or even what does it do on your, uh, you know, on your capital output? I mean, I don't think there's any exceptions on it, to, no. as far as you know. No, I, I don't mean, think it is either, but I, I would assume I think that in the future, I think in the future they're going to probably take general fund off there because you're required to levy 20 mm -hmm. mills, and then that's considered your state aid money, so we levy, <laughs> levy the tax and the state gives it to us. Um, <laughs> And plus more. I mean, it's we get more than what we take in. But they also use it for equalization for the district, among districts. That's correct. Yeah. They do. Um, um, last thing I wanted to, to share in my report is the uh, Sebep High School scoreboard has been having issues for some time now. And uh, I want to um, thank Scott Berger for all the work that he has done. He's worked with the company that that we that we have and I don't remember the name of the company off the top of my head but he's reported a problem he gets parts they get up there they put in the new parts we still have a problem they report a problem this has been ongoing um, I don't know if any of you were at the substate game um, last this last winter but that was embarrassing uh, when your clock is not working properly during the substate game um, they've done they've done a They've done everything they can with it. Uh, it's time, and I called the company oh a week ago and asked for them to give me a call because um, I wanted to find out what options we had. You know, do you have a do you have a, a repair person we could hire to come out? And I want to guarantee with that that it's going to be fixed. Um, they won't return my call, so it's time to do something different. And oh, so. Uh, new with the new gym, so 2009 uh, is how old it is. So I would think we'd get a little bit more out of it. But um, so anyway, unless there are objections from the board, uh, I am planning on um, working with the high school to go ahead and order new school boards and controllers. So um, 14,000. We're going to plan on moving forward with that. If you can get them to return a call, right. well, they're se they're selling it. They'll return a call. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this okay. is a, and this okay. is a, this is a different company. So, oh, okay. So, <laughs> that's what I have it. That's what I was wondering whether you use your magic term or not. We're going to buy. <laughs> Move on to item four: approved USD one through food service. Provide meals in July for a select elementary summer school program. You just need a motion? Just need a motion and support. I'll make a motion that we agree to USD we provide food service meals for July for the SES summer <coughs> school only. Second. Motion for support to uh, provide food service for the SPEP elementary summer school program. Questions or discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. At the same time, motion passes 7 0. Item 5, approved school fees for fiscal year 2021 20, 22. So, item 5 and item 6 are connected. Um, uh, we took off meal costs from here because meals for the upcoming year for students will be. Free once again for breakfast and lunch. So I have um, a question. The parent told me they paid for school lunches all year. They were free this last year, right? Well, they were up to a point. Um, when we started off the year, they weren't free. Uh, and so I forget at what point they became free. And then we have 
refunded money to our parents. He probably they had the money school lunch bill and his wife got the refund. So if, you know, if that's true, they need to say something <laughs> to a building principal. Okay. Now, what is possible? I'm trying to think. So extra milks are a charge. Yeah. Um, and then all the car, uh, I think that's just, it's about the high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is a charge that's as well. probably what happened. So anyway, yeah. And you can believe me, you can rack up a big bill from all the car. So, <laughs> no, that's true. Um, personal experience. In very, yes, personal experience. Everything else on this document is the same with the exception of um, what we're going to be talking about for families who qualify for free lunches. So in the past, uh, if a family is qualified for a free lunch, they can write a letter to the board asking the board to waive uh, what we've done in the past has been instructional fees and textbook fees. Um, we really need our families that are going to qualify for free lunches to fill out those forms so that we can get them qualified. And there's no incentive now because they're not going to get a free lunch. And so we really need to incentivize this so that we get those in. Uh, and so I am proposing as part of this vote that we say any family who qualifies for free lunches will automatically, without a letter, without a process, have textbook, instructional, and technology fees waived. So that's the care. Um, so that is a change from our practice in the past. I wondered about, um, there's, there's two new principles. Would there be any reason that those principles might have, I mean, like I know the middle school, you guys still use the planners and that's kind of a, a, a local school decision, correct? Is there any reason that, can we make it with a caveat that what if, what if our new principals say, I want, I don't know, I'm just thinking. So what, okay. what I'm, I would I'm track and I help, help me. Well, out. there's a, there's a fee for planners. So for years and years, the agenda at the middle school has been $5 fee because they encourage organization, right? Writing down, and then it looks like fourth and fifth do that too. So those are local school decisions. That's not a school board decision. It's not, we, we didn't decide that. So I'm just wondering about uh, our new principles. If that's, they, a, that's a really good point. What I'd like to do tonight is I'd like to go ahead and approve it. Yeah. And then if they want to do something different, we can bring it to July. Yeah. If that's okay. That's, that's what I think. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. good. I'm glad you're, yeah. yeah. That's a good thought. Because they might have a new idea. They might. Okay. You said textbook, technology, and what was the other one? Instructional. Okay. There's nothing there. There's no amount there. It's down below it, the 20. Yeah, it is. Oh. It's $20 across the board. And then oh, it's okay. all grade levels, all buildings. Okay. Those three things is what we're talking about. Yes. So, um, regarding the vote, you want to combine these or? I don't, I don't think so. I think so we just yeah. go ahead and approve the fees Please. and then mm -hmm. approve the um, coverage of some of those items as part of the. Well, the, if you approve this, this is part of this document. Okay. So you're you're approving that part of it. The the free lunches. Okay. So that takes care of six A one two. Because it's on at the bottom down there. That's what you're saying, family. We'll have textbook and instruction. Yes, and, and technology. And the next one is more work. informative. Okay. I want to okay. inform you about that process because okay. okay. you might hear about it. Okay. I would make a motion that we approve the USD uh, 113 fee schedule for uh, fiscal year 22 as presented. That's it. Awesome. Second. <clears throat> the motion would support to approve the uh, 2021 and 22 school fees as presented. Any additional questions or discussion? Those in favor, raise a hand. Close on side, both passed to 7 0.
Is that what you mean by yes. item five? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Item six. So, and I and I am. I'm a little bit unsure about how to go about this, but I think what we need to do is approve the application form. And, and I know in visiting with one of the board members, because this is Kansas State Department of Education's form. Uh, the uh, Department of Ag withdrew the form. So we, can, we can figure out some. Oh, wait, we, we've got an idea. Well, it's going to go as part of our enrollment forms. And so we can, on our forms for enrollment, we can. Put, put a note. Plus, we can put a note on, on there. Yeah, not on this. Not on this that. Yeah. yeah. Jennifer's might want to talk to you about that anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't change this, but put on there. So anyway, we are not. I, we were told. And I would say Todd Terry has already reached out to me. He's helping other districts with okay. how they're doing it. Right. Yeah, Thank you. Go. So. And anyway. and it might also help if if the uh, timeliness. Uh, 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 because you do those regular newspaper um, pieces to add it in there that this document is included. It is, we, we are required to give it to everybody and not single out individuals who it's given to, but it is not required to be completed. Yeah. And then big letters on that will put that we want you to pull it out if we want all those things. The, the three, <laughs> yes, yeah. So, anyway, okay. So, I don't know that I need a vote on that. Okay. I think that, that, that unless there's any questions with it, it's more informative. Page okay, 97, contract with HRS as construction at the risk. You know, six. Okay, so I'm going to try to zoom with Civium if they're still there. I think they might have tried to call a little bit ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I I told him I had no idea what time we'd be getting to this agenda item. I said six thirty at the earliest, so I think he's been on there since six thirty. Um, so anyway, oh, oh, there they are. Hi, gentlemen. Good evening. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you were wondering where we were. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, well, I want to thank you guys for the work that you've done on the contract. And I know that you've been back and forth. And um, I, uh, later this afternoon, um, before I got a hold of Theodore, um, Mr. Mishra had an opportunity to go through our contract. I have a paper copy for anybody if you want to look at it. Um, He's looked at it. Theodore has been over it several times. He's made a number of adjustments to it, um, taken the information from AHRS and put it in the appropriate slots. Um, Martin still wants to have some of the documents that are referenced in here that he didn't have uh, just to take a look at um, so that he knows what's in there. Um, do you do you guys have anything that you'd like to comment on in regard to this? You mentioned <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Other than I, I think we've found some fairly effective ways to translate from the state forms and the manner in which they asked for some of those particular expenses to be divvied up, and have been able to transfer that into the AIA agreement, even though it has slight differences of its own. And how it intends to set up. I, I think we found some successful ways to write those things in and carry through what the state statute requires. Um, and uh, I, I know your council was wanting the general conditions. Did you get that forwarded on? Okay. We did forward that on late this afternoon, early this evening. So that should be in your mailbox, Todd. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, along with uh, all of uh, today's edits have been finalized and sent by all up to date current copy. Okay, and so and that is the copy that you sent. And and Correct. I did I emailed forwarded that email on to everybody. I know you didn't have a chance to look at it. You may not want to. Uh, I looked at it, but so, that was too much to read. Um, 
So anyway, I think that we're in pretty good shape to move forward. Does anybody have any questions um, of, of the architects? So we will have the, this plus the one, there was 41 references to that other document that wasn't attached, so. Right, and, and that that's nine, what you said. That nine, yeah. that's yeah. what they have forwarded on to us so that we can share yeah. with Martin to make sure that we're covered. So just use it, you just use this PDF stop. and just search. 41. Okay. So <laughs> if, if there aren't any questions, you're ready to move forward. Um, what uh, Mr. Mishler suggested that we do is uh, language that I have here. Can you see it okay? So um, I move we approve the contract in form, whoops, subject to uh, additional changes agreed to by legal representation and Mr. Evans. And of course, AHRS is going to have to agree to it too because they'll be signing the same thing. I make a motion. We that we approve the contract in form subject to additional changes agreed to by the parties, such as uh, legal counsel for the board and Mr. Evans and the contract. All second. <laughs> I motion to approve the uh, contract uh, in form, is that what it says? Yes. Uh, yeah. Subject to additional changes approved by the district and the uh, yeah. Any questions? Discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. Those same sign. Motion passes seven zero. I make a motion that we go into executive session for the discussion of confidential student uh, matters as uh, authorized under coma uh, or. So I think we can do it in less time than I. Okay. So told how long? You, um, five minutes. For five minutes, and we will be meeting in this room. I think we're going to go in the next room. Okay. So we'll go into this room. Right. Right. So we will uh, go to this next room. I'd also ask if um, Mr. Evans join us and anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's it, gentlemen. Yep. Well, I had, Todd, I had, I had one point. I, I I don't know if it was uh, clarified to the other people, but this is kind of a uh, overall contract. But there's a, a an addendum to this once we get to the, to a GMP point. So okay. for the construction side, that that'll be another uh, a separate contract. But this gets us into the pre-construction end. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank all right. you all. Yeah, have a good evening. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay, so I, I would ask that Mr. Evans join us. Any other? Anybody else? I think that's it. Okay. So for five minutes in the next room, Mr. Evans join us five minutes from now, uh, 737. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion to support the other executive session for discussion of personnel matters. Return here in five minutes. Those in favor, raise your hand. Those same sign. Motion passes 7 0. Yeah, don't lock us in, please. <laughs>
Well, we're just saying the game is later than that. But mine got pushed back to eight, which I was happy about. Go. It is cold in here. It is. That's kind of that felt like it felt, felt good. good in there because yeah. it was kind of. That's it. Okay. Um. Wow. I move. We return to. Second. 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 So I make a motion that we go into executive session for the purpose of non-elected personnel. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. Executive session for the discussion of confidential students issue that is allowed under the coma exception for student confidentiality for how long? I think we can do it in five minutes. Five minutes with Mr. Evans and anyone and else? Mrs. Gates and, and Mr. Gorman. Mr. Mrs. Gates and Mr. Glenn. Uh, so five minutes, so uh, 745. To return. Second. Second. Motion was to enter executive session for the discussion of confidential student issues as well as the COVID session. Confidential. Return to the regular session at um, 745. Those in favor, raise hand. I was saying, Sally, what's the process of here? Yeah. 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 I gave 
I make a motion that we return to regular session. So please pass Second. Yeah. Motion to support to return to regular session. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes 7 0. We're back in regular session. And we have one more executive session. We do. Make a motion that we go to. Oh. Okay, so go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of non elected personnel compensation uh, allowed under coma exception for employee employee negotiations for five minutes and return to this room at 740. Uh, 750, 751. Second. Motion support, board executive session for the purpose of uh, discussion on elected personnel compensation for under coma. Uh, five minutes, return to regular session at uh, 751. Thank you. Those in favor, those in hand. Those in sign, motion passes uh, 7 0. <laughs> yes.
I've, I've had that happen before. That kind of surprises you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's show you on here real quick. Okay. I'll take you. I'll let you. Make motion to return to regular session. Second. Motion to support return to regular session. Those in favor raise a hand. Close in time. Let's pass that low. We're back in regular session. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion uh, second to adjourn. Those in favor, raise a hand. Those in favor. Studying in these AASB uh, um, updates. I guess I have something that you were wanting to. Oh, I already got it. Yeah, okay. so there's my two bar. Okay. See, they, they look, a they look bar. very procedural okay. to me. I know. I'll, I'll go back and look at it again um, before July. Yeah, what you can do with that? That's um, a box. You can make it bigger. You can make it oh, I can. I've got to see it. I'm just going to grasp it. But then I have, you know, it's hard to go through all that. It is. Um, it's very hard. I like I've, been, I've done that. The only thing I can't do is modify.